My name is Dan Topch and I'm an application engineer with Z Corporation and welcome to Zedit Pro. Zedit Pro is a great new software program offered by Z Corporation and it allows you to fix model geometry, paint and texture your model, prepare your model for printing, and view your model for visualization purposes. Let's begin with fix model. Here during the verification process, Zeta Pro will verify this wheel model and identify both the good and bad geometry and list the shells in a model tree, which we'll soon see. 142 verified shells, 14 shells with errors. We're going to run auto repair. Auto repair is a great feature. A lot of time, effort, and resources went into the development of the auto repair feature. And when you use the Edit Pro, you'll find more often than not that auto repair will fix most of your geometry most of the time. Here we're going to switch to repair color mode. In, re in repair color mode, uh, before we get to that one note here, uh, three shells with errors remain. So out of the 14 errors, auto repair fixed 11 of them, leaving us three, which we'll get to in a second as they are identified with red icons in the model tree. But here in this case, the repair color mode shows us pink, uh, which shows us that all of the normals are facing in the correct direction. Had there been inverted normals, we would have seen light blue uh, shells or triangles. So this shows us that things are heading off in a good start. So let's start fixing our model. Here we're going to take the first shell, which is the F of the Ford emblem. What we're going to do is we're going to fix it. We're going to select the gap, and we're going to fill the gap. It's that simple. It is corrected. It is a now printable shell. We'll move on to the other two. Here we have the rim. Instead of selecting one gap, we're going to select two gaps, and we're going to use the join gap feature. And what this will do is this will create new geometry between the two gaps and close it off. We'll also uh, select the two gaps like so. Choose join gaps. And it was simply that quick for fixing that shell. We have one shell left, which is this tire, or the inner tire, we can call it. If you notice, if we get real close, this particular shell has very thin geometry. There's two ways to fix this. I'm going to show you one way, and this is the uh, offset. We're going to offset the back faces, which are the inside blue faces of the uh, model. We're going to keep it in the default, just for this demonstration. And the offset is ready. And as you can see, it created some thickness, which is fine. This will print perfectly fine. But what I want to do is I want to close off the whole shell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to go back to the same way as I was fixing the other models. And I'm going to go to the gap selection, select both gaps, holding the control key. And I'm going to join the gaps. And here now, we have a better closed off shell. So if we look at our model tree on the left-hand side, we now see that all of our shells are green. Okay, It's a very intuitive and very user-friendly interface. Along the top, we have our user tools. On the right-hand side, we have the Fix Model tab with its associated tools uh, with some help text, which I'll get to in one moment. We have our Paint and Texture tab with its associated tools, and we'll get to that in just a moment, as well as the Print Preparation tool set. Here, as you're getting familiar with Zeta Pro, you're going to want to read the help text. As you become more familiar, this will all become second nature. But for the time being, read the to-do sections on how to do and how to solve and how to fix uh, particular shells. So let's move on. With this uh, completely fixed, we can now move to the Paint and Texture tab. And what we're going to do is resort back to the 3D printer color mode, like so that so we could so that we can see the colors of our model. Okay. Now what we're going to do in this particular tab, for those of you who've used Z Edit before, you'll be very familiar with this tab. It is a, it is essentially the same with the same buttons. So what we're going to do is we're going to select shell. We're going to select a color. And we're going to paint. And we're going to just have some fun and paint some shells. I'm going to paint the, like so. I'm going to accept it. And then what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to make the Ford emblem a little bit wider. I'm going to paint, like so, so it stands out a little better like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the blue color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to color paint. I'm going to paint by color. Now instead of actually selecting all of these lug nuts or that center cap, I'm just going to select one. And it's going to paint by color and paint it all blue. It's a nice time saver there. 
I'm going to right click to accept it. Then I'm going to go to the surface mode. I notice that this here center white piece here on the inside is not painted. And I'm going to paint that and right click. So we're on our way. We've painted this model. It's looking good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a nice uh, image map to it. We're going to pick our Goodyear logo, which is a PNG file, which has its transparency. Holding down the control, we're able to increase the size of this image. Let's reduce it just a little bit. I'm going to select the surface that I'm going to apply it on. It looks good. I'm going to right click it once to accept it. Right click it again. And it is now good. Now what I'm also able to do is I'm going to use our clip plane to access a portion of the geometry so I can add a engineering template. And I'm just going to put in here wheel. I'm not going to get too elaborate. I'm going to turn on transparency for the background like so. And what I'm going to do is accept that. I'm going to position it holding the control. I'm going to adjust the size. Reduce it down a little bit. I'm going to select the background. You may not see the yellow hidden in the yellow, but you can see it here. I actually selected the background and it's highlighted in yellow. I'll right click to accept. Right click it again. And we're good to go. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to add some text as well. And why don't we add in Z Edit Pro? I'm going to highlight it, change the font. There was one font I like here. Uh, biting my nails outline. We'll go to the largest. We'll change the color of it to blue so it sticks out. We'll bold it. Add transparency. Reduce its size. And we'll place it. Here it's a little big. We'll hold the control. Reduce its size down. Position it a little better. Select the background. Right click once. Right click twice to accept it. And we're good to go. Also, we can add circle annotations. And we'll do so right now by just adding a little circle next to it. Nothing major. This is good for highlighting uh, certain aspects in a drawing, especially, or in a model if things need to be changed. And as well, we can add a nice arrow annotation as well. Pick red so it sticks out. Select the background once, hit it twice to accept it, and there we go. I'm going to reset it now. I'm going to close this, and now if we look, we can see our engineering template, our text, our circle annotation, and our arrow annotation, and of course, we have our uh, image map applied to the front. So we've been able to color, texture map this, and now what we want to do is bring this into print preparation. The tools change. Before I do anything, what I want to do, I'm going to change this back to blue just for a second here. I'm going to show you a feature here on extruding a surface. What this does, first let me select the surface, like so you can see that in green. What this does is it adds geometry, and this is a great feature, especially if you have thin geometry that you need to thicken prior to printing, hence the print preparation tool set. It's going to be along the normals. Uh, I'm going to do it 0.25, like so. I'm going to press OK. And as you will see, add some nice geometry. And we're going we're gonna to keep that, OK? Now, what we want to do now is use some of the other print preparation tool sets. These are wonderful tools. Uh, let's start with splitting the model. What I first want to do is select my whole model, which I've done. I want to come over to the split tool. We have three options, linear, curved, coordinate value, but I'm going to choose a linear, just a straight line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to eyeball it like so, come across, and cut it right down the center. And right now what it's doing is it's cutting all of the geometry, all of the highlighted uh, shells that you see. Now, this is a great feature to have if you have a 310 plus or a 450 or a 510. Let's say you wanted to print this wheel out at full size or close to full size. Uh, you would need to cut it in half. Okay? And that's what we're doing right now. And 
and there we've cut it in half. Now if you look at the model tree, the model tree to some folks says it gets a little busy, but that's fine. As you get to look at it more and more often, you're going to get more and more familiar with it. Right now what it's done is broken it up into the top section and the bottom section, which it designates by an A and a B. Okay. Now if we had to go in there and physically select each A and B, it would take us a long time. We can select one, right click on it, go to groups, and select the group, and there it highlights all of the top portion. If we save out this selection and the file save as, we can save out this top half of this wheel. Okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it, we're going to go to selection, and we're going to say hide all unselected so we can see our model like so. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this shell, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add pins and holes. It's very easy to do. It's a great time saver. Let me just back it up here. And what I'm going to do is select my tool. I'm going to select cylinder. I'm going to do 0.25. And what I'm going to do is move this out of the way. You like so off screen. And I'm going to select four areas to put some pins, like so. Slide this back in and out of the way. Press OK. And as you can see, all of the pins are starting to be placed. In addition to placing the pins, it has also placed the holes as well. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come back up. We're going to double click on all so we see the whole model. Okay. And now what we want to do is we want to hollow the top part. So what I'll do is I'll select it again, go to groups, select group, right click on it again, go to selection, hide unselected, so we have the top part. And what I want to do is I want to select right in the screen the overall uh, shell itself, and I can blink it to show that I've selected the right one, which I have. And now what I want to do is I want to hollow it. Okay, what I'm going to do is change this to point one because it's fitting for this model. Now what it's doing is it's hollowing the model out. Okay. Now if we go back to our clip planes and go on Z, we can see that it truly has been hollowed out. Okay. We're going to reset that. We're going to close it. We're going to spin it around. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a drain hole. Okay. And I'm going to change this to 0.25. I don't want this too big. I'm going to place it roughly there. Say OK. And although it created a square hole, that's not what I wanted. So I'm going to Control Z to undo. I will create a new one, a round one, with 0.25. Select it there like so. Press OK. And if we zoom in, we can look inside and see that it has been hollowed out and it now has a drain hole uh, to help save on powder and binder. OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and select all again. And we're going to say, OK, since we've cut this in half and we hollowed it, and sure enough, you can hollow out the bottom half as well. Uh, I'm not going to do that just to save on time, but you could do that if you so desired. What I'm going to do now is go back to A, okay? I'm going to do the group, select the group, and there it selects all of the shells associated with the top part of the cutting or the splitting that I performed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to file, save as, and what I'll do is I'll save it wheel A, continue the save like so. And then what I'll do is I'll select B, do the same thing, go to groups, select the groups. So again, that it selects all of the shells in the model tree. Nice, convenient, great tool to have. And it selects the bottom. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save out all of those selected uh, shells highlighted by green, uh, the, the green bounding boxes. So I'm going to go File, Save As, and I will save it out as B. So now, when I want to print these two out, and again, you just go to selection, hide all unselected. I'm going to close this bounding box off. It'll print out each section so that you can make it truer to scale, or at least a larger scale, 
where you could uh, use the entire build area of your of your particular printer. This was uh, a quick overview of Zedit Pro. Uh, feel free to use the software. There'll be some tutorials placed online soon. Enjoy.